Okay, so that's pretty much everything. Um, we've gotten off to a pretty good start. We figured out how to view different cells, how to change them, how to move around and draw on them, add parts, add boxes or add polygons to them, change the layers that we're putting things on. So that's that's pretty much it. That's the basics of Lassie. So I'm just going to wrap up by not really showing you anything particularly new, but just kind of giving you uh, a quick look through of the op amp that uh, no, don't save these changes that I made because they're horrible. Uh, oh, and I should probably turn on all the... Uh, yeah, just turn on all layers and that will show you, indeed, all layers. Uh, I'll just go ahead and give you a quick uh, breeze through of the different uh, pertinent structures on this op amp that the program comes with. So let's start at the beginning here because these are the, uh, these are the inputs. These two pads are the place where you'd actually feed your signal into the op amp. You can see both of these inputs, see these metal tracks that connect these pads to the uh, these structures here. These are both resistors. Uh, they look like it says 200 on them, so I'm guessing that those are 200 ohm resistors. So it goes through these, so the inputs go through these resistors, and they hit these things here, and these, as you can guess, are transistors. Uh, and I believe, uh, let's see. Yeah, these are actually PNP transistors and not NPNs. Uh, so, you know, it goes from these uh, NPN transistors down here. Here's the, uh, or these PNP transistors down here. Here's some NPN transistors. This thing over here, uh, this is actually, it looks a lot wider, but it's exactly the same as these NPN transistors that we've been looking so much at. It's just a lot wider for larger current carrying capacity, but other than that, electrically it's exactly the same, it just has more uh, tolerance for current and heat because it's wider, that's all. Uh, other than that, so you know, all these are just basic transistors, actually this up here is a, um, a power source, see how it says PSRC1, uh, that's basically, if you go to the list and look at that kind of cell, uh, it might be kind of hard to tell. Uh, it's basically just some transistors wired up in series. It's basically just a, a power transistor kind of thing, except it's several transistors. Uh, I'm sorry, not in series, in parallel, yes. it's I believe it's three transistors in parallel for power. Actually, see these cells that say underscore SCH at the end? These are schematics, so they're not um, layout files. They're just... Uh, human readable schematics. So yeah, you can see that this power source is just three uh, PNP transistors lined up in parallel. Pretty straightforward. Uh, and similarly, just as you can view the schematic for that, you can also uh, op amp underscore SCH is a schematic indeed for the entire op amp. So see here is that power source, the three power transistors in a row. Here are the inputs that go through those resistors. Here's This part here is obviously a differential amplifier, which you know is the start of the op amp, and then all processing circuitry and comes out here, etc, etc. Uh, let's see, what else is on that op amp that we can look at? Um, these green things here, as I mentioned earlier, these are indeed silicon resistors. Uh, basically, silicon uh, is, you know, it is a semiconductor, so it is somewhat resistive. And to make more resistance, you just make it longer. So, see, these structures here are shorter resistors. This is a big, long resistor that goes back and forth, so this has more resistance. In fact, I think they're, yeah, the, the 75K here, I believe that means that these are 75K ohm resistors, and this is a 200K ohm resistor. So basically, as a very simple rule of thumb, longer polysilicon gives you a, a higher resistance resistor, and shorter uh, shorter resistors have less resistance. Also the width is relevant. If you make a wider polysilicon track, that is able to carry more current and that lowers its resistance. So yeah, longer or thinner silicon equals more resistance, and shorter or thicker silicon gives you less resistance. Pretty simple. Um, so there you go. So these, you know, that's the resistive stuff there. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, this transistor here, it's a little hard to tell where the collector is because the collector actually connects straight to VCC. So you might think there's no collector pad, but there, there is. It just, it goes straight to VCC. It's just hard to, it's just drawn in kind of a weird, uh, weird way. 
and also down here I might want to just highlight this thing real quick. This is a uh, this is also a PNP transistor, and you might think, why the heck does it have five uh, rectangles on it like that? It looks kind of weird. Uh, that's just because it. Uh, wait, is that this? Oh, no, sorry, S. Here we go. S P N P one. Basically, um, these three things are all part of the same. Uh, piece of metal, so they're all energized all at once. It's just uh, that I believe is the base. Wait, hold on, is that? Yeah, that is. Yeah, so these, this, and this, and this collectively form the base of the transistor, and it's just that way to give it more, uh, to make it. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? J just basically to, to give it more effect because it it puts more silicon next to next to each other and so it puts the structures next to each other. It's ba it basically is just a way of giving you uh, more silicon without you having to make a big long transistor. You can kind of compress it and make it more compact by layering it like this. This is actually pretty common. When you start getting into IC layout you'll very frequently see layered structures like this in which the parts are kind of sandwiched but still connected to each other and that's just for that reason. It just gives you more, uh, basically more power. I apologize. I probably didn't explain that very well. I feel like I'm not explaining a lot of these concepts very effectively, but I hope that you get the idea. I think they're. I think you can intuitively understand what this is just by looking at it, because you can see that the metal connects those three parts together. And similarly, this thing, which is the, uh, is that the emitter or the collector? I believe it's. Oh, let me see. Yeah, this is. I can't even tell because the my screen is not. Uh, Okay, so this is the, yeah, that's what I thought. So this is the emitter, these two parts here, and this uh, completely unconnected entity up here is the collector. All right, whatever. So there you go, so that's pretty much it. So it's pretty straightforward, you know, this is a, a big PNP transistor, this is a big NPN transistor, these are smaller transistors, this is uh, basically a power source, just a bunch of transistors rigged up in parallel. Resistors that, uh, you know, connect to other stuff, and that's it, and then just the six uh, external connections. And again, if you want to get an idea of how it all fits together, you can also get the schematic. It's a pretty simple op-amp. This is designed not to be a great op-amp, but just to be a simple op-amp for you to start with on the, uh, to get used and started using the IC layout program. So this probably is, it, it's not necessarily a resistor that you'd use in the real world, it's not necessarily a great design, it's not like a, a 741 or, or something uh, a little more advanced like that, it's just a simple op-amp that you can use to start doing layout with. So there you go, play around with it, I would recommend if, if you're still interested and if uh, you want to get started using this program, I'd recommend just playing around with it for a while, just load up this file and you know check the schematics so you have some idea of how it works. And then just go go crazy. Just go ahead and play around and start uh, moving around different parts, or adding parts to it, or just changing the structure of it. You can uh, you can uh, have a lot of fun with it if that's your idea of fun. And if not, then uh, you probably stopped watching these videos a long time ago anyway, and so you wouldn't have gotten this far. Is my guess. All right, that's it. I think that uh, pretty much concludes my brief tutorial introduction to Lassie, or Lazy. I'm still not sure how to pronounce it, but I hope that at least now we have a better idea of how to use it. Thank you for watching, everyone, and if you have any suggestions or any ideas for future videos, if anything's not clear and you think I should make another video on this, uh, let me know, and I am open to feedback. But I think uh, I think we're pretty clear on it now. I think we have pretty much a pretty good idea of, uh, of how to at least get started, at least the basics. And that's pr pretty much what I was going for. I was just going for the basics, not anything too terribly advanced or fancy. Anyway, I will stop talking now. Thank you for watching, everyone, and I'll see you later. Bye for now.